the topic of the presentation is sprouting and silid control. I'll be talking to you about uh, a study carried out by Hermes Teixeira from uh, Master Citrus. He is a Master Citrus of Fundus Citrus and Juan from Colombia that um, has his uh, graduate studies in Jabuticabal and worked also on this topic. Just would like to remind you that the work on sprouting is part of uh, a larger study that we have carried out for a long time with the goal of understanding the impact of uh, the environment on processes involved in the spread of the HLB bacteria. Why are we worried about it? Because, as Juliano showed yesterday, our sector of uh, citrus sector uh, uses an extensive area of uh, 500 kilometers from the south to the west southwest Minas Gerais and also some more kilometers this way with a lot of climatic variation within this area and uh, that has uh, shown that along the years 14 years HLB has been more prevalent in the central area characterized by intermediate temperatures in between north and south and also in terms of rainfall amount. So owing to that, we have uh, carried out several trials and studies in growth chamber and, and greenhouses so that we can reproduce what happens in the field with all variables for us to understand several aspects of the disease. Several field trials are here represented from Minas to uh, the south area and then we assess the impact of shooting. We have worked with plants coming from nurseries and in the field we have the most different age groups of uh, trees and uh, we are then focused on uh, psyllids as related to sprouting. And also we have healthy and diseased plants for us to understand the processes of uh, the acquisition of bacteria, its spread and uh, so on and so forth. So I'll try and sum up in the next few minutes some results that we have had in terms of uh, how important sprouting is, seasonal variation, influence of irrigation, rootstock and uh, cyan or canopy, it's uh, Hermes's work, and, uh, and then the sprouting in healthy and diseased plants, development phases for the sprouting and uh, influence uh, of temperature, importance of uh, sprouting in the reproduction of the psyllid and also the inoculation of Liberibacter and also the consequence of uh, the growth uh, on uh, in, in, as related to spraying. So the importance of uh, sprouting. Several studies have shown that uh, uh, sprouts are really nutritious. It will uh, um, produce uh, uh, odor that will attract psyllid and then it's, they are the favorite place for the reproduction of the fruit borer, for aphids, for uh, sharpshooters and also psyllid. So we have two types of uh, shooting. We have the flush, that is the vegetative growth. They just uh, elongate and grow and they mature and they're responsible for the development of the citrus plant. And we have uh, the this other shouting that is um, um, under the influence of hormones and everything and will then become, uh, uh, turn into a flower bud and then the fruit. This differentiation is uh, influenced by the environment. As we can see in the slides, we have uh, situations that are very typical in the north of the state of Sao Paulo, where in uh, 
moist or humid in the hot summer, the plant will uh, have uh, go through a uh, flush vegetative growth. And then in the winter that is dry, we uh, plants uh, have a uh, water stress and deficit, and then they look like this. And then we have uh, the spring rainfall, and then most of the shoots will flower. So those are uh, the images of uh, different seasons that, that, that will take the plant to go one way or another in terms of shootings. Hermes's work, or for three years, he has studied in Matel, the he studied the dynamics involved in shooting. With the 18 combinations of uh, rootstock and science, in irrigated and non-irrigated areas, five plants per combination. And they analyzed the plants from the sixth to the 36th month. And uh, here we have a vegetative growth, flush in the first year, and then the vegetative and reproductive uh, shootings. It's important to notice that in the beginning, we always have uh, shoots in the plant. There's no time, well, unless in fall, during fall, we have a reduction of the population or the presence of uh, new shootings. And then later on, we have peaks here. There are not as frequent, but, you know, shootings are always there. And that is difficult for us to control sell it. That's why. Variations are due to this change, this uh, peaks. They are related to those um, temperature and uh, rainfall variations, as we can see here. So we have a drop in temperature and rainfall. But then during the winter, if we have rainfall, then we have a flush right after our vegetative growth. We have not seen the impact of irrigation on the shooting uh, pattern, as we can see here. So peaks take place in the irrigated and non-irrigated areas here in the central region in a very similar way. So what we can see is an amount of shootings that is larger in the non-irrigated area, very likely influenced by the dry uh, time followed by rainfall that will lead to this amount of shootings, influence of rootstocks. We have not seen any influence of rootstocks in the shooting pattern. As we see here, we have rank per lime and sunkey that behaved similarly. Same thing happened to canopies. Although we have had more vegetation for ruby, the shootings pattern was very similar. All the study that I'm mentioning to you was carried out with healthy plants. Today we are trying to understand even better all that for diseased plants. Today I wanted to show you this slide that I included, um, although we have not quantified yet the influence of pruning in the amount of shooting as compared to non-pruned trees. But it's visible that uh, the top and side pruning will lead to intense vegetation. And that is a critical time for controlling the insect. Keeping this population of a shooting that is very large, vegetating, uh, growing without control is an invitation for bacteria and for greening to develop because the insect will be attracted and will reproduce and inoculate the plant. Some colleagues comment on the sharp increase of uh, the incidence from one year to the other due to uh, pruning practices. And also when you have spray-in that is not as frequent. Influence of the disease. This is a study that we carried out not, a, not long ago, so we do not have a lot of um, conclusions yet. We have not gone through winter. We started in October last year, so we're going to go through the first winter now for this experiment. And what we can see so far is the trend of our having more shoots, as uh, shown in orange here, for different regions. 
and uh, this is for diseased plant. HLB will cause defoliation that will lead to an effect that is similar to pruning, as we can see on this slide. And another detail here is uh, synchronicity. So we have shootings in the healthy plant and here disease plant, showing that the disease plant will work as a, an infectious reservoir of psyllids for the plant. Juan studied a lot the development phases for the vegetative shoot. We have the bud uh, being swollen, and then we go to the P one, two, three phases, and so on and so forth. And then with this increase or this development, we have uh, uh, hardening of tissues to then become less favorable for the insect, as we can see here. This study was carried out in two different environments, and it showed that the female insect will lay much more eggs, many more eggs in the V1, V3, uh, and 5, then in 6 and 7, showing that initial phases are more favorable for egg laying for um, of a D diaphorina citri. And most of the eggs will hatch and become nymphs and adults if uh, if shootings are initial, the, just for the initial shootings. So here we see the importance of the shoots for uh, egg laying and for survivor of the insect. Here we have uh, results in terms of the importance of uh, release of Liberobacter. Here we have four experiments put together, always with the same trend that new shootings, young ones are more favorable for the inoculation of the bacteria causing graining. We have the P V5 phase, that is where leaves are still very tender, the shoot is not growing anymore, but we see that there, there, there is a low frequency of inoculation of, by insects, infectious insects, in those stages. Juan also studied the impact of temperature on the development of shoots. and. Um, What's important for us to understand is the frequency of shooting, the frequency rather of uh, spraying to protect shootings. Here I show the two uh, extreme temperatures that were used in the growth chamber, a higher temperature varying daily from 28 to 38, and the other one varying from 10 to 20. So when for the shoot to, to come from V1, from V1 to V6 is very fast. 30 days is what it takes for the complete cycle. And it can come to sizes of up to 30 centimeters, whereas during cold weather time, the same change from V1 to V6 and or 5 will take much longer, almost 100 days, and shoots won't go beyond 10 centimeters of length. Those are extreme situations that can happen in the field, not for long periods, but we just wanted to understand you know, in a better way what happens. And also he included another range of temperature that allowed him to determine the number of degree days necessary for the development of the shoots. And by using temperatures that were maximum and minimum for the day, he could calculate then a model in terms of how long it takes for shoots to mature in different times of the year in the central region of Sao Paulo. So we can see here that during spring and summer, we need an average of 25 days for shoots to mature and grow. Whereas, well, and this growth, this fast growth, means that uh, there is a shorter time of exposure to psyllids as compared to periods that take longer for shoots to develop. However, that is not favorable for the coverage of insecticides. So if uh, the shooting uh, are, uh, grow faster, we should uh, spray more often. On the other side, when it's when it's cold, then it 
shootings will take longer to grow and it favors spraying because uh, shoots don't grow as much and then insecticides will remain there for longer. Here, just would like to show you this um, picture of a diseased plant in Descalvado. You see the little shoot here? That was This picture was taken on April 24th this year and it was the stage V2 with 0.5 centimeter. Then when we, they came back for um, follow-up uh, assessment, it was already 12.5 centimeters, almost mature, almost mature. So what's the importance of all that for the psyllid? Well, we have this schematic here to show you this. We have the little shoot and you spray. Of course, you're going to protect the shootings for from uh, the excess of uh, psyllids. But the shootings will grow, and the area that is protected will still there at the bottom. And all this new part of growth is unprotected. If you do not spray again, or if you do not control the insect, what's going to happen? The insect will come here, inoculate the plant, and the plant will be infected. Then you come again and spray it and kill the insect. However, the infection already took place. So that is the concept that we want to pass on to you. So be careful at the times of uh, uh, more intense shooting and the sprouting and growth of shoots. And uh, of course, we have research carried out at Funda Citrus on this. But we do have to protect the plants at the time that is more favorable to, to the reproduction of the insect and inoculation of healthy plants by the bacteria uh, with the bacteria. And now we are studying, as we said, how shootings take place in diseased plants so we can understand what goes on with the bacteria and the insect for those plants. And uh, care should be taken, as Renato mentioned yesterday, at uh, different phases. So the summary here uh, shows that the initial phases of sprouting uh, is more important for the infection by the Liberobacter by the psyllids. Um, shooting should be or are the target for the insect, the vector insect. We have seen that the sprouting pattern, especially in the study that we carried out for this region, was similar in terms of um, irrigated and non-irrigated areas, and also for the main varieties of uh, rootstock and scions. So we believe that uh, no special care should be taken with this or that combination of rootstock and scion or irrigated areas and non-irrigated areas as shown by the data in our uh, study carried out so far. Also, we saw that the sproutings uh, follow a pattern that uh, um, can be changed by pruning procedures. So field data show that. So be careful after pruning, because right after pruning, we have the intense flush in the fast growth of uh, shoots, depending on the time we prune, so we cannot uh, fail to care uh, for the plant at that time. So 3 to 10 percent growth from one year to the other have been uh, reported. And uh, we have uh, shootings with new tissues being um, unprotected from, um, from uh, the excess of uh, psyllid then this is what happens for most of the regions. And uh, we should use uh, short intervals in between sprayings. That is the only way to protect the plant, they are healthy, from the infection uh, by greening bacteria. I would like to thank again all those in my team, Priscilla, Fernando Luis Montesino, Sergio Luna, uh, that is, that this is a student at, in Laudacere in uh, Everton. Uh, graduate stud student that has visited different regions and uh, counting and measuring sh uh, shoots and uh, and thank you you all of you for your attention thank you